I'm Tom Putney with the Legislative Gazette, and I'm here today with Jerry Benjamin, longtime professor and director of the Benjamin Center at SUNY. Why do you support a yes vote on a constitutional convention? It's simply stated it's the only way that we can effectively reform uh, the structure and operation of New York State government. Uh, and in your mind, what would be the risks of not holding a convention? Well, not holding a convention is, is the acceptance of mediocrity, is the acceptance of ethical and uh, lapses in criminal behavior, it's the acceptance of a court system that's uh, among the least well organized in the country, it's the acceptance of a local government system that's imposed upon by the state government and doesn't really, the localities can't really uh, do their jobs effectively. So it's acceptance of mediocrity in government, and I think New Yorkers are, are worthy of being well served by their governments. And what do you think are the most important issues New Yorkers are facing that a CONCON could address? Well, certainly ethics. We can create an ethics institution with teach that teeth is constitutionally grounded. One that not all my colleagues agree is very important, but I think is very important, is getting election administration out of the Constitution, removing the so-called bipartisan system we have, which is really a partisan system, and taking uh, restrictions on voter participation that are effective restrictions that are in the Constitution out so we can, I hope, elevate participation and, and assure that fair election administration occurs in New York. So that, that, that's, and then there are other really important things like uh, diminishing the, the, the power and presence of an entrenched uh, legislators who are essentially not challenged and can serve uh, for a lifetime. And are there any resources that people may not be aware of? We know at the polling that awareness of this issue is very low and has consistently stayed very low. So are there any resources out there that people well, the, should be more aware of? We have a website of the Committee for a Constitutional Convention is one place to look. Another is the Citizens Union uh, website. Another is the League of Women Voters website. Uh, the New York State Bar Association website. There are a number of significant and credible organizations that are advancing uh, a constitutional change. Additionally, uh, I've been, and others have been uh, holding forums and events across the state that are being put on YouTube by various organizations. LOHUD, the news organization in downstate New York, has a debate that'll that's online that'll be up for the whole time now between now and the election. So there are places to go for, I think, information and, uh, and uh, ideas. All right. We came from your CONCON panel earlier today, and one of the things that was talked about a lot was dark money. And dark money has been cited as a possible influencer of the CONCON process and has been pointed to by people advocating for a no vote as one of the things that could happen that could take the process away from the citizenry and give it to special interests. Now, you pointed out to that point that unions have been the largest spend spender in the lead up to the vote. If dark money or outside interests or the Mercers or the Koch brothers were to influence something like this, wouldn't they be pumping money into the campaign for a yes vote now to ensure well, that? Well, you're, you're asking the question and answering it. I think, <laughs> I, 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 I think that that's true, that if you want something to happen and you have resources, you expend those resources. I want to emphasize that I'm not hostile to unions advancing what they regard as their interests, however critical I am of their understanding of their interests. Um, uh, the fact is that they're the big spenders. That's not a normative judgment, that's a, that's a, a, a factual matter. Um, so if we're going to talk about who's spending to influence elections and who classically spends in New York to influence elections, we have to understand that uh, it's not just people from one ideological perspective or one set of values. There are large there are a significant number of big spenders in, in New York elections. Mm -hmm. um, more generally, I'm, I'm really uh, troubled by the argument, the negative argument that uh, we have to hunker down and protect what we have, even though we have a government that's non-performing and troubling in its structure and operation. Historically, New Yorkers have been affirmative people who advance, try to advance their values and ideas for change in a positive way. They're not 
defensive people who who be, we're not defensive people who believe that we have to s circle our wagons and keep bad things from happening. We want to make good things happen, and the Constitutional Convention is a venue for making good things happen, both on the rights side and on the structure side. Um, unions can actually gain from a, a convention and added pension protections and. Advocates for rights can gain by enlarging the scope of rights and the protections, the groups that are protected. But they pre are predisposed to worry about an unfamiliar, what's unfamiliar or what's not outside the status quo. And I think they're very influenced by their relationship with legislators who don't want to be bypassed by a convention. Mm -hmm. Uh, the no vote side has pointed to the existing process for amending the Constitution as reason enough to not put the entire Constitution up for change. Can you outline the difference between the change that could come from a Constitution as opposed to the incremental change that's being proposed as the structure? Well, the, for the, the Constitutional Convention is unlimited in scope because the question to call it is unlimited and is in the Constitution itself. Shall there be a convention to uh, amend the Constitution or revise the same? And since this question is in the Constitution, the legislature can't const constrain or limit the scope of the convention, nor should it be able to. Questions in there to hold the legislature accountable and the government generally accountable for its performance. And so we're having a referendum on the performance of our government. Now, there is a process for calling convention through the legislature, proposing amendments through the legislature. I have studied this very closely for almost 50 years. The legislature does not advance ideas to diminish its own influence or power. It does not advance ideas to reform government that are, not, that are perceived to be outside the interests of the major political parties. It's not inclined to restructure government. It does pass amendments now and then, but the Constitution has a lot of detail in it, so it'll amend the Constitution because it has to to permit casino gambling. It'll amend the Constitution to allow uh, skiing trails in the Catskill Park in the Forever Wild area, because the Forever Wild is constitutionally protected. It amends the Constitution to increase the number of, of uh, civil service points given to a veteran or a wounded uh, veteran who's uh, combat injured. So there are small incremental adjustments that the legislature is willing to do, but they're not at the core of the problem of New York's uh, governmental non-performance. That's not going to be addressed by the legislature. It has to be addressed in a way outside the legislature that can essentially impose uh, outcomes upon the legislature and the government. Jerry Benjamin, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for taking the time to answer some questions. It's a great pleasure. Nice to visit with you. I'm Tom Putney for the Legislative Gazette. Thanks for watching. For more on the ConCon and any other state politics news, follow us on social media or visit us at thelegislativegazette.com.